Hello everyone, welcome to worship here at Trinity Lutheran Church and School in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We're glad that you joined us as we gather around the Word of God to grow in grace and knowledge. Today as we continue our um, in this epiphany season, we're going to be taking a look at Jesus casting out demons today. That's of course good news. It's a powerful image of the gospel that Jesus is setting a person free, having compassion on that man or that woman and releasing them from the power of, of the devil and his demons. And the good news is that it's not just in the gospel where Jesus does that. He does it for us as well in our baptism. You have been set free from the lies and the deception of the evil one. Today, that's our theme. We're going to be thinking this through. We're going to be rejoicing in this gospel image that we have, that we've been set free from the devil and his demons, that Jesus is greater than Satan. We'll see you in worship in just a minute. Welcome to worship today. We gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, 
merciful Father. I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities, with which you have, I have ever offended you, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant to the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture lesson for today comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 12, first 17 verses. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and she cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns on its heads. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice you heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with rage because he knows that his time is short. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to a, a place prepared for her in the wilderness where she would be taken care of for a time times and half a time, out of the serpent's reach. Then from his mouth, the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away in the torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed from his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring those who keep God's commandments and hold fast to their testimony about Jesus. Our second scripture lesson is from Hebrews chapter two, beginning at the 14th verse. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death. That is the devil and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it's not angels that he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. 
because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. And a reading from 1 John chapter 2. I'm writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God lives in you and you have overcome the evil one. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is from the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And our gospel lesson for today is from Mark chapter 1, beginning at the 21st verse. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching? and with authority. He even gives orders to demons and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. As soon as they left the synagogue, Jesus went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and all the demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons. But he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That's why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee preaching in their synagogues, and driving out demons. This is the word of our God. We now confess our faith using the historic uh, Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit to the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Every time Jesus casts out a demon, it's good news for us. Jesus casting out a demon in the Gospels is a foreshadow of the cross of Christ. On the cross, Jesus cast Satan down. He crushed Satan's head. He defeated him and he took away his power. Jesus is greater than Satan. Jesus is far, far greater than the devil because Jesus is the son of God. God incarnate to rescue us from the power of the devil. Mark begins his gospel with an action-packed, rapid-fire look at Jesus as he teaches and as he works all kinds of miracles. 
Whenever Jesus casts out a demon, he is saving that person. Jesus is rescuing that individual person from captivity and setting him free. Jesus casting out demons in the gospels is good news. It's gospel. This is what Jesus came into the world to do. This is his work to set people free. And we see that whenever he sets people free from being possessed by the demon. Jesus crushes Satan for us. You are saved and rescued from Satan's power and his lies and his destruction. You too have been set free from the power of the devil and his depraved demons. In Hebrews, we heard today, since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives have been held in slavery to the fear of death. And in First John, we heard today, the one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. The promise of the devil being destroyed and specifically that his head will be crushed like one kills a snake goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Remember in the Garden of Eden, Satan in a snake deceived Eve and led her to sin against God and to break his commandments. Adam joined in right afterwards. Sin and death had now invaded the world through Satan, who was in the form of a snake. And so the very first promise that God gave of a savior was that one of Eve's sons would crush Satan's head like one kills a snake. That promised savior is Jesus. That first promise is called the Proto-Evangelicum, the first gospel here it is. God says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. It's teaching us that there's going to be a common event where Satan's head is going to be crushed and the son of Eve's heel is going to be struck. That common event is the cross of Jesus. At the cross, in Jesus' death, from the outside, it looked like Jesus was defeated, that he was killed. He was crucified like a common thief. His heel was struck, as the prophecy said. But what was really happening is that Christ was crushing Satan's head like one kills a snake. By his death on the cross, Jesus has broke the power of him who holds the power of death. That is the devil. Jesus has set free all of those who all, all of us, who all of our lives have been held in slavery to the fear of death. Jesus has set us free. He has rescued us from the devil and his demons. He has crushed Satan's head like one crushes the head of a snake. Jesus is greater than Satan. And the benefit of all this comes to you in your baptism. Your deliverance from Satan and his power and his demons occurred when you were washed clean 
in the waters of baptism. In your baptism, God was at work to rescue you from Satan's power and to set you free from death and even the fear of death and dying. I'm sure you've seen many baptisms throughout your life, but a part of our baptismal service says this, the word of God teaches us that we were all conceived and born sinful and under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. In the baptismal service, we recognize Satan's power over us in, in sin. But then right after those words in the baptismal service, you receive the sign of the Holy Cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Jesus Christ, one set free by the Savior. In holy baptism, God rescues you in his son, Jesus. He redeems you. He sets you free from Satan, his demons, and their power. The Lord is at work in the waters of holy baptism to bring you into his family, to bring you into his kingdom, to set you free from Satan, his power, and his demons. It's all part of a gift of salvation that the Lord Jesus Christ freely gives to you by grace alone, through faith alone. What it means is that the evil one, the devil, Satan, and all of his depraved demons put together have no power over you. The way I teach it in confirmation class is I tell the kids that Satan is like a mosquito, that all he can do is buzz around you. He can't even bite you. All he can do is buzz in your ear and whisper all kinds of lies to you. Because that's how the devil works. The only thing Satan can do to you is lie to you and try to deceive you. That lying and that deception is temptation. That's all he can do. That's it. He can only tempt you. He can only buzz in your ear and whisper lies and deceptions. He can't do anything else. It's like he's a mosquito with no stinger. He can't hurt you. He can only lie to you. He can only deceive you. That's the way he interacts with you, by lying and by deceiving. Make sure that you don't believe the lies of the Hollywood movies. Satan cannot possess you. He cannot haunt your house. He cannot control you. He cannot speak to you. He cannot appear to you. The only way the devil and his depraved demons can interact with you is by lying and by deceiving you. In order to remember our baptism and the work that God does for us, we include a renunciation of the devil in our public worship services. As a lead-in to the creeds, when we gather to worship here at Trinity, we boldly confess that we renounce the devil and all of his evil works and all of his wicked ways. We want nothing to do with Satan, his demons, their lies, and their deceptions. This renunciation of the devil reminds us of what Christ has done for us that the good Lord has delivered us and rescued us from the devil and his power, that we know the truth so that we won't be lied to and deceived. We know the truth of God's holy word. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are enabled to live holy and godly lives.
Did you hear the scripture lesson from Revelation 12 today? It's a fantastic image, a wonderful image of Christ defeating Satan. And Satan is described as this great red dragon. This word picture, this image is full of gospel for us. It's a powerful, powerful way to think about your relationship with God. In, this, in the word picture, with Satan as this great red dragon, the ascension of Christ is pictured as war in heaven, where Michael and his angels defeat Satan and his demons, and they are cast out of heaven. In the Gospels, Jesus alludes to it when he says, Satan, he saw Satan being cast out of heaven like lightning flashing across the sky. The meaning is that there is no one in heaven to accuse you of sin before God the Father. Satan, whose name means accuser, who stood before God and accused people of their sins, has been cast out. He has been thrown down like lightning flashing across the sky. Because of the work of Christ, Satan is pictured as being expelled from heaven, thrown down to earth, never again to stand in the presence of God. Now, in the presence of God, at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, stands the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is not there to accuse you of sin, but to absolve you of sin. The only thing that God the Father hears about you in heaven is that you are forgiven, that you are absolved of your sins. God the Father never hears accusations against you. Satan has been cast out. Christ is now there and he speaks for you. In 1 John, he says this, if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And in Romans, it says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The burden of your sin and its guilt has been taken away from you by the Lord Jesus Christ. And he paid for your sin and its guilt by his death on the cross. Through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are absolved of your sins. That means that you are officially declared forgiven and righteous, not guilty. You are officially declared holy. You are brought into God's family. You are forgiven. This is your standing before God because of your baptism. God the Father will not allow anyone in heaven to ever accuse you of sin again. Jesus is there and he absolves you. He forgives you. He is advocating for you. He is continually forgiving you your sins. He is speaking words of peace and reconciliation and eternal life. There is no one, no one who accuses you of sin. There is no condemnation for you through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. All of this is pictured in this fantastic image in Revelation 12, where Satan is cast out of heaven. No one to accuse you because Jesus is there and he is forgiving you all of your sins. Satan, the accuser, has been silenced. His power has been destroyed. And you have been set free from your sin, from its guilt, from death, and even from the fear of death and dying. That changes everything for you. This is who you are now. You belong to the Lord. 
you have a new life of holiness to live, a life to live in the truth of God's holy word, not being misled and deceived by the Satan. You are sanctified, set apart, and you belong to the Lord. In the Gospels, whenever Jesus casts out a demon, it's good news. It's a gospel image. Jesus is setting a person free and rescuing them from the power of the devil. In your baptism, Jesus has done that for you. Jesus has cast Satan away from you. He has set you free. He has rescued you from the power of the devil. And you belong to him now. And you have a new life of faith to live. Amen. We pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for crushing Satan's head for us by your death on the cross. We rejoice that you have set us free from his power including death and even the fear of death. Help us to understand our status in your eyes, that we belong to you and live in your kingdom. Send your Holy Spirit so that we might live holy and godly lives, loving our neighbor and glorifying our Father in heaven. We pray this in your name. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you next week in worship.